You have like a hierarchy that you talk about in some of your like speeches, and I was wondering if you could kind of go through it with people. And uh, you talk about, you know, kind of nutrition, fitness, and biomarkers, and then you go down into kind of like thyroid, testosterone, gut health, stress optimization. I wonder if you could just talk about that <laughs> for people that are listening that are like, okay, I might go ahead with the, this epigenetics test, but still, what are some of the things that I'll be doing that? you know, you think are really important. Yeah. You've been watching some very old videos. <laughs> yeah, okay, those are old, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so we have, we now have a four-tiered system. So we have the unbalanced state. Unbalanced state is where the lifestyle factors are not all in optimal states. And you can have maybe six of the seven balanced, but if the seventh one isn't there, you're not in homeostasis. Okay. You're in unbalanced state. And you know, people can come in with MS, diabetes, high blood pressure, whatever it is, but you can also have the, the person without disease that comes in that's just not optimizing lifestyle. So our first step is to get them into homeostasis. And the Greeks knew this. I mean, the Greeks defined the, even the term dietetica was all about man's way of living, how much he slept, his movement, his exercise, his job, his family life, his food. That was dietetica, and the Greeks knew that, and it was all about being in homeostasis. So how do we keep the system balanced? Once you're there, there's ways to leverage, at that point, lifestyle factors. So this is where epigenetics plays in, into it. How do we enhance gene expressions? How do we suppress detrimental gene expressions? How do we create a, the next state through lifestyle? And this is what we call the optimized state. Once you're optimized, that's where the fun begins. That's where we can go into the enhanced state. This is the state that generally is not achievable naturally. And this is a state that's only been achievable in the current decades because we didn't have the ability to get there. Now through medications, peptides, technology, all this stuff, we can bring ourselves into this, this enhanced human state. And Super it's pretty cool. Stuff. Yeah. It's, it almost sounds like we shouldn't be talking about it. It just almost sounds like kind of a secret, you know, that we could be these kind of optimized humans. Well, know? we were talking about uh, Stephen Hawking's last book that he wrote. Yeah. And he was talking about genetic manipulations. Uh, and he said, we can make these laws to try to regulate this, but people are going to go ahead and do it anyway. And we're going to create a self evolving human race that you either get on board with or you will become the slave of this new paradigm. And, you know, I think that's a bit doomsday-ish. I don't think it's quite that. But I think, you know, we have to start looking at the fact that we are in a new evolutionary phase. And this evolutionary phase is, is the enhanced human. You know, how do we move things? People say, you know, when I, when I give talks and I, and I talk about enhancing cognitive function, I say, how many of you would be for increasing uh, brain performance in a child through gene manipulation? And very few of them would be. They're like, no, 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 that's a little creepy. And I said, well, what if the child was going to be born with a genetic defect? Would you be okay with manipulating the genetics to, to avoid that defect? And they're like, oh, yeah, that'd be, that'd be okay. So 90% of the room's okay with that. Right. And I said, but think about this. How are we going to solve world problems? We can solve world problems with a greater probability with more intelligent population if we drive things towards this. And, and gene editing in this stuff is not expensive and it's not going to be exclusive. I mean, you can do it in a garage. I mean, it's amazing how simple some of this stuff is. So mm. I don't see it as going to be absolutely exclusive to a certain group of people, but it's going to come and it's going to be trial and error and some people are going to have some bad outcomes with it at first but it is something that's going to happen and people say well you know making people more intelligent isn't going to be the the best thing to do you look at hitler and you know I'm like but what if we could increase empathy what if we could increase compassion too i mean why are we limiting ourselves to thinking that this is just the the one thing by enhancing cognitive function that's going to to occur and, uh, you know, I'm not a, um, I'm a very optimistic about what's coming, even though I, I hear a lot of people that are very scared.